G'day, John for the Hot End. Today I'm going to be talking about hot ends, all metal hot ends of the knockoff variety. You may have noticed that a lot of printers on the market these days come from China, let's be honest, they're from China. Uh, and a lot of the printers are very good, some of them not so good. Um, this particular one I have in front of me is a Creality a CR10500, but that's not the reason I'm here to talk to you. What I want to talk to you today about is this thing. This is the hot end, in case you didn't know. And I've taken the screws out of this. This, is, this contains the fans that cover up the hot end. This is the hot end, and at the moment it's hot, okay? Now you will find that all of these printers, almost, well, no, I'll say all of these printers, use hot ends that are purported to be uh, E3Ds or uh, Micro Swiss or some other type of uh, high-end hot end uh, copies, clones, knockoffs, whatever you want to call it. And the, the reason they do that is because, like for instance, an, a genuine E3D is going to cost you somewhere around, somewhere around 100 US dollars. The knockoffs you can buy on eBay for 10, 20. Now they look exactly the same. Um, the, the, the cooling fins and everything, the, the heat blocks, everything looks exactly the same. So why the big difference in price? Now you will find that a lot of these printers use as a selling point an all metal hot end. Now why they do that I'm not sure because I'm not a fan of all metal hot ends. But that's what they do, supposedly because you can go to higher temperatures uh, with an all metal hot end. But I've even seen them advertise all metal hot ends on printers that don't have a heated bed. Now why would you want higher print temperatures if you don't have a heated bed for the print to stick to? So you're going to be printing with PLA generally. They come out with these knockoff hot ends that for some reason are cheap. And I'll tell you the reason or the, what I believe is the reason why they're cheap. And that is the throat, the heat break that connects the uh, heat block to the cooling fins up here. There is a, a threaded heat break that joins the two together and in an all metal hot end that is the part that's all metal. There is no uh, PTFE tubing inside that heat break to allow for the smooth flow of the filament through the cold part of the hot end. The cheaper cloned hot ends obviously do not have the high degree of honing and polishing of the internals of those all metal heat breaks. So therefore, after your first three or four or five prints with PLA, it's going to start playing up. The, the gunk from the PLA, it builds up inside the all metal hot end, sticks to the inside of it, and before you know it, every print you try and print is going to be horrible. It's going to be under extruded or completely clogged, and it's just not going to work because the PLA filament can't get through the heat break. The first solution is you dismantle the whole thing, which can be a pain because you've got to do it while it's hot and everything is tight and it's a bit of a bugger. Uh, and the first thing you'll do probably is break your thermistor and, and it becomes a, yeah, you know what I mean, you've all been there. So you pull it apart, you take the throat out, you replace the throat with a PTFE lined heat break throat. Uh, and Bob Girardi, you're up and printing and it prints really, really nicely all of a sudden. I have discovered, now some of you may have already discovered this, but I haven't seen anything anywhere on any of the, uh, the Facebook groups or, or YouTube that refers to it. But I found this stuff. Now, th there are different brands of this stuff. Um, I think uh, WD-40 make one, this one is a CRC one. And no, it's not what you're thinking. This is not a silicon spray. What this is, is a dry glide 
dry film lubricating treatment made with PTFE. So what you have here is PTFE in a can. This stuff is fantastic for the use that I'm about to show you. All right, you've got your hot end. This is all you have to do. You remove the top nut. It's best to do it while it's warm, but not hot. Because this stuff goes on like paint and it has to dry. It's usable after 15 minutes. It takes 24 hours to do a full dry. Okay, so we take that out of there. We remove the PTFE tubing that was inside the cold part of the hot end. And you can see it's, it's already getting gunked up and horrible on the end of that tubing because it goes down and touches the top of the heat break. So we're just going to clean that up just by nipping the end off that tube like so and just make sure it's round after you've nipped it. Okay, that's clean. Next, the magic spray. As I said, it's like paint. It's got a ball bearing inside it, so you've got to give it a shake. Now, the whole point of this stuff is to stop things from sticking. So the last thing you want is any of it getting on your bed. So we'll cover the bed. We'll give it a shake. Okay, give it a shake. All you do is get the spray and down the hole. There she goes. Right, that's it, fixed. That is now lined with PTFE inside the all metal hot end. A very, very fine lining, but lined just the same. So we'll just give that a second to dry off a little. A few moments later. All right, so uh, we've left that for 15 minutes. It's dry, so now we can put it back together. We pop the PTFE back in the hole. Now you'll find that it's actually a little tacky still, but that's fine. We'll push that down in there, like so, as far as it'll go. Uh, screw the top back on. So what we have now is a heat break, as I said, that's aligned with a fine layer of PTFE. So directly off the can, it says, will not melt, freeze, or wash off. This is directly from the can, okay? So, we now have an all metal hot end lined with PTFE spray. We'll crank it back up. Fingers crossed, that is now going to feed through there with no extruder skipping no clogging, no blocking, no nothing. That is feeding through there beautifully, magnificently. All right, that is a lovely smooth extrusion. There's no bobbling and twirling and all that other rubbish that you get. Because you'll note that because I haven't waited 24 hours, a tiny bit of that spray actually gets down into the nozzle as well. So it actually comes through the nozzle better as well. So that's it. That's how you fix it. It's that simple. PTFE spray down the hole. One word of warning on this stuff. It's a bit stinky. So do it in a well ventilated room and it's not cheap. You can pick up a can of silicon spray this size for two or three dollars. This is 150 grams and it cost me 23 Australian dollars. So it's a lot more expensive, but it works. It's great stuff. Um, we get nothing out of this, by the way. This is purely a tip and my opinion uh, and for your own information, it's great stuff. Any brand, as I said, they're different brands. Okay, that's it from me for this one. Catch you on the next one.